Hey, what you're about to hear has escaped from Behind the Paywall. It's an episode of the Behind the Stuff podcast, our weekly podcast over on the Make Stuff Patreon. On the podcast, we talk to other creators, do Q&As, reviews, think pieces, announcements, behind the scenes stuff, everything, all of it. It's too it's too much too much cool stuff. Now, we'll be posting the random episode or clip on the public Make Stuff channel every month or two, but if you want a good hour a week of it, go check out any of the $5 or higher tiers over at patreon.com slash make stuff studios link in the description all right let's do it hey gals guys and otherwise if there is one thing uh, that is that is so important to who I am as a person. If you if you ask any person walking down the street, any old person, hey, do, what what what's one thing you know about Jonathan O'Roselion? And they'd say, oh, Jonathan O'Roselion of Make Stuff, the YouTube channel. Well, obviously, the one thing is that he keeps his promises. That's what everyone knows about me. That's all I do. That's my whole thing. I'm the promise keeper. And last week's episode, I promised that I would do this week's episode entirely about learning stuff. Uh, just keep keeping yourself, keep yourself learning, keep yourself getting better at what you do and expanding your mind. And, and so, you know, what? that's, that's what we're going to talk about today. Cause, cause I'm, a, I'm a, I'm good old, good old Jonathan O promises Rose Lion. That's what some people just call me promises for short. That's just, it's, it's a thing that actually happens and isn't made up. And, and I promise that. And, uh, yeah so you know what i i enlisted or i more like drafted the help of uh noah from the youtube channel polyphonic one of my favorite youtube channels in the history of the world his videos are like my videos but like better and just more consistently put out and all they're they're about music he specializes in music and you know what i'll say that's why that's why you know i i just i don't restrain myself to music so that's why he's just so much better i'm kidding he's just better at everything than me so noah and i are going to talk about how to keep learning how to keep getting better uh we're going to talk about his experience with a new project he took on recently which is creating his merch his posters for his channel that are so cool so we're gonna dive into that uh and we got a whole list of things to talk about so let's just get into it welcome to behind the stuff all right uh yo we are here with noah aka Mr. Polyphonic. That's your nom de plume, Mr. right? Mr. Polypho- Mr. Senior. Polyphonic is my dad's name. <laughs> call me Polly. Uh, <laughs> Can you please start going by Polly? A lot of people do call me Polly, which is, I don't know, I guess it works. It, it makes me think of like, like Polly from Jersey Shore or something, so I don't <laughs> love it, but you know. Yeah, I immediately thought... Uh, was it cousin Polly or something from uh, the Rocky films, which is equally not flat. <laughs> so, yeah, but but if you want to call me Polly, call me Polly, call me Noah, call me Polyphonic. I'm gonna. I'm not, here. How about this one? I'm coining a new one. Uh, t- shortened version of Polyphonic. Phony. Phony. Is that good? Yeah, because I'm fake. <laughs> Everything I do is fake. <laughs> uh so so we're 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 doing a classic a cla- classic bts pod uh hang sesh hey can you come up with a better name for hang sesh please uh, um chill time chill Perfect. zone chill zone there we go chill you zone 360 brought to you by smirnoff ice <laughs> that's my favorite section of the gas station near me <laughs> uh so so uh oh really quick before we dive into it because we are going to be talking about uh learning stuff which is always fun but uh, i just wanted to say that your new rocket man video is the best and i love it i love it oh, thank you yeah it's 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 underperforming a little but i'm pretty proud of it i think it's it's one of my favorite aesthetically that i've made in a long time i love the look especially that closing shot with the uh astronaut floating in space looks so dope yeah, it turns it turns out that in Premiere, just like basic transform rotations with some easing, mm-hmm. 
looks so yes. much like floating in space. I've really I've really played into that in a couple videos that I've got coming. <laughs> I love those are my favorite things when like something is just so simple but looks so cool. I did a thing uh, in the video I'm editing now, Jack Yorm's video, where we just cut out a character from a comic strip panel and had it as a separate layer. And I just slowly increased the scale while increasing the uh, drop, drop shadow distance at the same time. And oh, that's I, I'm going to steal that. That's yeah, clever. It's it's great. And I've, I've been doing like just super fun. Like it actually. Yeah, because you work with a lot of uh, like uh, images. Uh, and so, yeah, that's that's something that these are the most challenging videos for me just because and I have no idea how you do it so often because it is it's so hard to make an image look visually interesting. I, I think it's interesting, though, because I think that. I always think there's a different kind of challenge to the other thing that a lot of people do, where obviously, uh, for those of you that don't know, I do my stuff on music. So except mm -hmm. when I'm doing music videos, I don't usually have kind of visual uh, visual accompaniments uh, readily available, like people who do film. But I, I think it's a different kind of struggle, because I mean, people who do film, and a lot of the time, the really best people, like look through the entire film, pick out specific shots that match specific mm -hmm. things and and things like that. And I'm like, it's it's a kind of it's a different kind of thing where sometimes I'm like, man, I wish I could just stick together B roll of films, but you can really you can tell the difference when people are just using film as filler and when people are yeah. really trying to find specific things that that fit into what they're trying to say. Yeah, that's such a that's such a weird balance for me just because like I I, I am so turned off by videos that are just uh, like they're clearly just putting in whatever footage they find from the thing to it, it's pretty much a podcast with like, uh, you know, footage that they threw together overnight or whatever. And it's like just so it visually takes me out of it. It's it's, it's distracting when those things are so uh, so discordant, like those don't mesh well, then I just get distracted by the footage or and don't listen to the audio and. Well, and, and especially every now and then there's things that are like that, but then have sections where you need the visual, but I'll like click away and like browse another tab or something because I'm a multitasking millennial. Um, right. And like, and if, if the videos aren't dynamic enough, I'll click away and then they'll like bring in something that's a, that's a specific visual cue and I'll actually miss it because right. they didn't keep me watching throughout. Whereas some some people's stuff uh, just is just so tight and just so visually uh, just um, like really dynamic and uses mm -hmm. the right examples and stuff. Uh, yeah. And and I think that's an interesting struggle that I I am glad that I don't need to figure it out. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. And I mean, even with with music, you can very much fall into that trap even more in terms of yeah making it interesting to look at. And I think you do the best job at that it's so good oh and also really quick next next elton john video can we can you just please do a uh, a whole video on the singular line from your song uh if i was a sculptor but then again but then again no, no. <laughs> yeah, fun fun fact about your song i ruined mm -hmm. that song for my mom because my mom's like high school boyfriend bought her that record and she thought it was like the most romantic thing ever and she mm -hmm. told me that story and i'm like yeah everybody's high school boyfriend <laughs> at that time bought them that record <laughs> and she's it's like oh yeah i guess that like that, that two... i never clicked in her mind she always just kind of <laughs> thought oh what a nice romantic gesture your song and it was like yeah no yeah, uh, yeah I'm, tr I'm trying to think of what that song was when i was in high school but oh. it was probably like a like a My Chemical Romance yeah, song I was or something. Say, like uh, loose lips sink ships, Fallout Boy. It was so romantic. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that song caused two cultural phenomenons, uh, and it was it was making a lot of people fall in love with other people for that exact same trick. And uh, just no more sculptors anymore. We don't have sculpting yeah. people anymore. He he just disillusioned or, everyone. Or we also don't have men who make potions in traveling shows anymore. <laughs> hey, you which speak for yourself. seems like a sweet job. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, all right, all right. Let's 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 get into this. So, so one thing that I am obsessed with that I feel like is very underappreciated. All of in me society. by John Legend. I figured it out. <laughs> all oh, of me by John yes, Legend. Yes. Or thinking out loud. 
and Ed Sheeran's entire career, really. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm. So that's I, a bit more university for me, not high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I feel like I missed that just slightly. Uh, I mean, I'm very young and hip. Um, so, so yeah. Speak. Hey, speak. Hey, speaking of a university, I almost called it hey. college, but you Canadian fool, you wouldn't know what a college. Is. That's how it works, <laughs> they, right? they they have colleges here. <laughs> nope. They're just they're just no. not quite the same as universities. You, only unis up there. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, here we don't know the difference because all of them charge us ridiculous amounts of money and they're interchangeable. Um, so and so you know what? Let's skip that. That's a thing that I just read today. That Cal Arts, the animation uh, school just just boosted its tuition to fifty thousand dollars a semester which is like as much as like mit and harvard and like nyu film school and stuff like that and and a lot of people are like hey maybe we shouldn't do college anymore for creative stuff that's ridiculous it's insane like they did the math and like to include room and board and books and all the equipment you need you need for it it's like seventy eight thousand dollars a semester and that's don't hey hey we're gonna come up with some alternatives for you there's definitely there's not to get not to get too political here but there's definitely Mm -hmm. no downsides to leaving an entire generation with giant amounts of debt as soon as they enter the workforce no no that's that's not gonna do anything to the economy no no no. well here's the thing if you're old then you just <laughs> it die. It doesn't matter. Death solves all problems. Uh, uh, <laughs> except oh we, we've outsmarted them because we make them live forever with our technology and our health. <laughs> we're so on track right now. So we're here. We're we're gonna we're gonna give you some good ways to keep learning in your adult life or your teen life or whatever. Just extracurricular learning activities, just to just to keep you going forward, giving you that momentum giving you that inspiration just just we we want to keep learning here so i made a list of things do you have do you have a list of things in mind at all i'll I'll say i can i can i can come up with a list on the fly i can bounce them off you do you want to start or should i start i have Uh, one in mind okay yeah yeah let's start with you hot shot my number one way that i keep learning things Mm -hmm. is just talk to people and listen to people uh and 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 I'm always asking, I love, love finding out what someone does and asking them kind of the intricacies of that and like, oh, what's that like? Things like that. And just one of my favorite like little pleasures in life is when you find out a job that exists that Mm -hmm. part of you knew must have existed, but you'd never really like thought of. Like, like Mm -hmm. even like, like there's people who are programmers who program the operating systems for like restaurant plug-in things, <laughs> right? Yeah. L- l- like that's that's the thing. There, there's all of these things. Like, I mean, even just like there's so many people that make logistics of things happen that like organize spaces and uh, get materials or like mm-hmm. people who make special parts. But I love talking to people and getting uh, like like what they do either for their job or for fun And asking what it is about that that really, like, gets them going. What do they enjoy about that? What are the struggles? Because I find that there's so often so many lessons that you can apply from that to your Mm -hmm. own life or to learning your own things. Um, And even just asking people on on another level, like, why do you like this song? Why do you like this movie? Right. Things, Things like that is such a great way to learn and such a great way to uh to converse and then you can share your experiences and a lot of the time their experiences will recontextualize yours and things like that Mm -hmm. yeah and oh and we just learned something it's don't let noah go first or he'll he'll steal the first thing off your list (laughs) ask questions talk to people yeah no it's also like in an in in another sense it's very it's very helpful if you're in a creative field or anything that has to do with relating to other people or understanding experiences just because just finding out people's different experiences with different jobs or hobbies or whatever helps you start to get out uh get at those universal uh 
just experiences and those things that everyone goes through and just like, oh, wow, I completely relate to this person who works uh, in, you know, stocking items at Target because both of us have to do this thing and we can relate on this. And so, it yeah, I just feel like it gets us closer to that, that just universal empathy and uh and it's just it it uh, applies so many different ways to think about things that is so useful and i think the flip side of that too is don't just talk to people outside of your field you can learn a mm-hmm. lot of that, about that oh yeah but talk to people inside of your field i've i've become way better of a creator since i've started talking to other creators mm-hmm. me specifically people yeah. like yeah some are people like you or Volksgeist or people like that who do stuff that's very adjacent to what I do. Some mm-hmm. are kind of more broad, people in other corners of EduTube, vloggers, things like this. But but uh, talking to more creators, I think, has been probably the number one thing that has made me better as a creator. Because there's things like sharing specific editing techniques, like we were talking about earlier. I just said I'm going to steal a thing that you used. But mm-hmm. also just... uh approaches coping mechanisms things like that Mm -hmm. like like i think it's important to talk to people from all walks of life but i think it's also important to talk reflectively to people that share your walk of life and to think okay well we're doing a similar thing what are we doing differently what's working for us what's not working things like Mm -hmm. that just always always talk to people is my is my biggest piece of advice yeah, and I, I think I think a big thing which will factor into learning a lot is just humility and not convincing yourself that you know everything about a thing, like never convincing yourself of that, no matter what, uh, and just, just being, instead of just like the humility of like, I'm just down on myself and I know nothing and I'm an idiot, just that excitement of hey there's more i can learn i can always just keep getting better while still being good like i i think that that there's a very positive level to maintain there and uh and yeah i think that that was something that was weird for me at first talking to people within my field of just like there's that competitiveness that you have to block out uh or just that fear of being judged by them cuz no one cares about that stuff i definitely i um so one of the biggest, like, kind of most humbling things for me, I was like, so my channel, my channel took off pretty fast, and I was seeing pretty good growth and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And then I joined on with uh, what, what are now, what are now being called the the smart YouTube mafia after a uh, <laughs> after some YouTube drama going on, but um, uh, of which I am a proud member. Uh, yes. But but basically, uh, standard in this chat, there's. Suddenly, there's people like like Kurzgesagt and CGP Grey and stuff like that, and and I was Great. kind of before that I felt like a, a a big fish in a small pond. I was kind of kind of the the biggest or one of the biggest of the um, music video essayists, which mm-hmm. is a very small pond because there's like a dozen of us tops, or at least a right. dozen that I've seen. I'm sure there's tons of great people working beneath the scenes. And then I go and start interacting with these people that have millions and millions of subscribers. And I it, it, it was great for me because it was very humbling. My ego was getting a bit too big. And I'm like, okay, no. I, I've, I've gone from feeling like a big fish in a very small pond to a small fish in a very big pond. And that's a better feeling. It's it's better to have that motivation. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's always... It's, it's a weird... That's something that uh, it has been such a weird phenomenon for me is like being in YouTube and like this feeling of like, should I be starstruck <laughs> from, yeah. from it's like, oh, this person, oh my gosh, this guy that's following me and loves my stuff has a hundred thousand subscribers. And I like, it is, it is this weird, like, I, I like I said, it's always, it's always this I think that's where the competitiveness can kick in, especially when there's these consistent subscriber rates or view numbers like like just just you want everyone to succeed, especially with that's the good thing about like the algorithm on YouTube specifically is if someone does a similar video to you, 
and they're getting tons of views, that's great because you might show up in their suggestions. And let me say that's the one good thing about the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, that is that is the one thing. <laughs> that yeah, but 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 I agree. I think it it provides. It's similar to. Uh, it, it's actually similar to something I've seen in in craft beer. Craft beer is a market where there's actually, even though in theory all these people are competing for the same place, at least mm-hmm. in any of the craft beer scenes I've seen, they're super, uh, super open. They're uh, like collaborating with each other. They're saying, "Oh, if you like this, you you should check out that guy," and things like that. And I think it's it, like I, I don't think that competitive markets need to be competitive. I think that you can right. share a market and have it be a collaborative space where. Like, it's it's not like if somebody spends ten minutes watching one of your videos, I'm losing mm-hmm. money, right? Like, like I think, right. and, and I think that that's an important thing to remember in in the YouTube space. Yeah, the only the only downside of it is they watch ten minutes of my video and they're like, "Wow, Polyphonic is garbage." What did I even? That's, that's true. This Why is that's that that's nonsense, what I did bro. when I when I start watching your videos. I go, "Wow, Polyphonic <laughs> is garbage." Well, mutual. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of because I, I i refresh myself on all the uh videos uh that you did your posters about uh this morning mm. which we're going to talk about uh towards the end of the podcast but uh yeah i was just like this is it's it's this it's this weird line of like the, here's the stuff i want to steal and here's the stuff that bothers me because i can't even steal it because it's too good <laughs> the uh Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was just going to say, I think that brings brings us well to another great learning uh, learning thing. Yeah. Which is just watch more stuff. Watch yeah. stuff all of the time and watch yep. stuff critically. You can yes. you can watch stuff for entertainment, but there's uh, it's it's so easy to just tune out and kind of absorb. If you really want to learn anything you watch, anything you listen to. Think, why are they doing this? Is there mm-hmm. a motivation behind this? Why is this scene shot like this? Why is this song mixed like this? And when you're critically thinking about the things you consume, you'll learn so much. And you'll learn that so many things have just so much thought put into them. Right. Yeah. And you know, we can we can cut it out if you want. But the smallest of spoilers here or hyping here, uh, you and I are working on another podcast uh i will not reveal what it's about or its name or anything like that but uh what? you is... didn't tell me this you didn't tell me that we're working oh, yeah, on a yeah, podcast no, 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 no you didn't hear <laughs> that uh that recorder click at the beginning <laughs> of our conversations every time uh and it, it's about something we we both are obsessed with but we're now sort of analyzing it bit by bit and it has been so eye-opening to me just just to take this critical eye to this thing and because it was something that i just i would become immersed in immediately to so to like force myself to take that step back and really break down which actually very much is uh another one of my things kind of blends in with this one is uh reverse engineering and just Absolutely. looking at something and thinking uh, how how did they pull this off? And I think there's definitely, there are more obvious cases like that. Like if you're an artist, then just drawing someone else's art uh, just from, you know, sight or whatever is, is obviously a huge help. Or even tracing something is a huge help in terms of figuring out how people did certain things or watching people's process. But with less obvious things like... Uh, like let's say with comics this is actually an exercise i've done a few times look at a page of a comic you really like and then write a script for that page of what you would tell an artist to do to achieve this page that you're looking at and that's really cool i love yeah. reading i love reading scripts of comics i've got some yes. comics with like deluxe versions that have scripts and stuff and mm-hmm. there's there's just so much stuff that you miss in your mind that they're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's 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 so much especially with trying to figure out pacing and stuff like that. And like even yeah, you can do that with a scene in a film and you'll you can notice like try to strip it down and be like, "Okay, what movements or what actions really matter in this scene 
uh, especially when like you know don't don't do the ones where it's like an action sequence where you're just listing off everything that happens but do the ones that are like you know talking scenes one of my favorite of all time boy this is gonna be real real uh, old school nerdy here but the third man with orson wells and joe cotton they have this conversations a conversation on a ferris wheel and it is one of the most interestingly uh shot and acted and written scenes just ever it is so good so think of a scene you know even the opening of inglorious bastards or something like that where it's just like there's so many things happening between the conversation that you should just be keeping an eye out for I've got to give a shout out here to one of my favorite channels that all of you have probably watched is Lessons from the Screenplay. Oh, yeah. Because this process that we're talking about, that is basically the premise for his entire channel, right? Yep. It's looking at the actual screenplay. Often he'll have the screenplay, the screen like cut in half with the screenplay there as mm-hmm. something's going on. And and th- this is an interesting thing that to watching things like video essays can teach you how to better read a text And then you can apply those lessons. That's one of my goals with Polyphonic. I like teaching you about music, but more I like teaching people the different ways to read into their music because then they can apply Mm -hmm. that to everything. Because I always take, I always take kind of all of this stuff I learned in, I did an English minor in my uh, undergraduate. And Mm -hmm. the best thing I learned was how to read a text. They would teach you this and then you could apply this. You, they would have you applying it to, old British literature, but you can apply it to everything. You can apply it to paintings. You can apply it to Mm -hmm. movies. And, and it really, it's, it's such a good way of critically understanding what makes something good. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and also here's, you know, here's, here's a bit of a more obscure one that I don't hear people talking about much just because I feel like people hate doing it. But again, it falls into that, that healthy level of humility area, but go check out your old stuff that you've created. Uh, I'm sorry to do this to you. Oh, I hate doing that. I know uh, I should do it more, but I sometimes I, I, I I check out the old ones that I like. (laughs) See, this is, this is something that I, I think that you and I, this is a rare split for us, uh, in, in perspectives here because you know, I used to be hypercritical of myself and then I realized like it would, it would be a good motivate. It was, it's a good motivator to be like, I need to improve. I need to keep learning. I keep, I, I need to expand, but, uh, but also you're kind of depriving yourself of such a necessary, especially for, you know, people who aren't making a living off of their art or their, their career yet. And, uh, you know, just people who aren't necessarily getting a lot of feedback or it's very solitary. Uh, it is such a large reward to just have this pride in the things you create, not this blind pride where it's like it's perfect and anyone who criticizes it is dumb and wrong. Uh, but just this just this like seeing a, th- a cool thing you did that, you know, you spent hours on and just be like, wow, that's a, that's a cool thing I did. I'm really proud of that. But yeah, the, the reason the reason I bring up. Uh, oh, and then just on that on that front, there's this there's this uh, quote I, I love from I don't know the specific quote but Tarantino was asked about if he can watch his old stuff and he was like of course I watch my old stuff like I don't I don't seek it out and watch it every day or anything but if it's on TV I'll watch it for sure because like I'm I'm making stuff I love and if I if I hate you know looking at it then that's that's that kind of is a is a bummer because I like I it's it's something that I was so passionate about and I'm, I'm making the stories that I want to see in the world. So why not enjoy those? Like let yourself enjoy those, which is probably the hardest recommendation I will make. That's, that's a, that's a really cool, cool quote. I, mm-hmm. I think it's interesting. One of the things that I really want to do someday when I like retire from polyphonic mm-hmm. is I want to go back and remaster and remake a lot of my earlier videos. Right. Some, I think some of my earlier videos, j- just in terms of like the messages and some of the things they deliver are so strong. Mm-hmm. But technically, that's that's my biggest issue is I, f- yeah. I find issues watching it because I can do so many things better technically. Yeah. Whereas in terms of like substance, I think some of my best videos are still some of the first ones I've done. 
it's just in terms of style i've i've improved so much yeah and i i think that it's also very good for recognizing what things you are just sort of taking for granted and have become comfortable with where you should be you should be evolving and you should be pushing yourself forward because like I look, I, I went back and watched my uh, first video, the Hamilton video the other day, it just, just out of, I was like, I, it's, I haven't watched this since I did the commentary edition a year ago or whatever. And it, it's, it would just be fascinating to watch the opening thing. And I immediately noticed like, despite it being my first video, it has some of the most interesting choices and just because I didn't know what I was doing and the way I solved problems without an obvious solution or without, you know, the standard solution, it, it, it resulted in so many interesting things that I was just like, my videos have gotten like less like creative because I was because that creativity was like out of necessity then because I didn't know yeah. what I was doing. After I watched the Hamilton video, I was like, man, I wonder I wonder what else I can learn from this stuff. And I went back and watched my first uh, Behind the Stuff vlog because this podcast used to be a video series. And there was still just a ton of stuff in there that I was like, that's, that's really cool. Like these different title cards I did for it and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that is... I I am I am impressed with myself. Where it, it also there's the added benefit of just being far enough removed from it that you um, have shaken off that like oh I'm sick of looking at it. I can't look at it objectively anymore because I've been it's been like you know right in front of me, like it's been my whole periphery this whole time. And so like once you're removed a bit from it and going back and having that like you know not where you don't know it like beginning to end like every second of it and you've forgotten some of it then yeah it is so useful and just also just inspiring it reminds you of some of the things that you were inspired by at the time that you're like oh yeah i should be striving for that more i th i think it's interesting too because i think uh a, a good eye to look back on is when you're looking back on older stuff which there's like five videos that I really like rewatching because they're really good. The rest mm -hmm. of mine I hate rewatching. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, my favorite to rewatch is my Miles Davis video. Mm -hmm. That video is impeccable. I um, love that one. But but one thing that I like to look at when I'm looking back at stuff is you look at something and you think, how would I do this now if I was making this video mm -hmm. now? And am I right that I would do this differently now? Is there a reason I would do it differently now? Mm -hmm. If I w if I'm if I would do it the exact same, should I maybe reevaluate how I would do it? I think one of my biggest kind of shifts is I starting with my Aesop Rock video, and I'm not doing them in every video, but I've started doing mm -hmm. kinetic typography. Um, yep. and you've gone and, to the dark side. Yeah. Well, it's 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 not. I'm not doing it all the time, but mm -hmm. when it's justified, I'm trying to do it because I think that. It, it gives a more dynamic experience. Sometimes sometimes just showing lyrics on the screen works, but sometimes I want something with more punch. So I kind of, I've always, always like for a long, long time loved connect, kinetic typography. Mm -hmm. uh, so one, one day I was working on this video and I was like, I need to really like, I need something dynamic for these visuals. So I'm just going to learn kinetic typography. And now I've done it on... I think two videos that are out and two more that are coming out right now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that's a thing where I just like, I really, really felt that this video needed something else because I was reflecting and I kind of had a run of videos that I liked and were good, but I kind of felt like I was half-assing it. Like my, my right. run of videos, if you want kind of, insider knowledge kind of my run in november 2018 uh to yeah kind of november 2018 so that's like johnny cash's at Folsom prison bruce springsteen's mm -hmm. darkness at the edge of town history of metal amy winehouse's back to black i felt that I, I felt that in terms of uh kind of like what i was talking about this stuff was all good but visually it just felt like i wasn't pushing myself so I started to try to find new things to push myself. And uh, then I ended up coming on kind of a run of, I think, I think a run of some of my best videos ever with my Frank Sinatra in the wee small hours is again, 
one of my favorites mm-hmm. ever. The composition in that is just so impeccable. I love that. Yeah. My Klaatu video is different and weird, and I love it. And my Aesop Rock video, I just I nailed that one to to brag a little. And that that run of three is one of my favorite runs. That's my favorite run, dating all the way back to my run of um, Miles Davis, Thin White Duke, mm-hmm. and oh, and. Uh, People who parodied Bob Dylan, I really liked. Yeah, you know what? It's it's funny that Miles Davis video was uh, the the first one you put out after I started following you, and ah. that was just like. And it's funny because like uh, I love Miles Davis, but I never. He was one of those people. I got very into uh, Thelonious Monk, but I never. That was like next on my list was Miles Davis, but I I ended up never really getting into like how he created stuff and what's that the modal jazz modal jazz yes baby. it is so fascinating it's like what if music but math yeah but it is it is so crazy and i love it so much and that's why uh uh not to get on too much of a tangent but i remember reading this there's this great interview with uh Oh, of course, I don't remember his name. Oh, uh, Quincy Jones. And it's like a recent one. And the the takeaways for a lot of people were like, oh, he said that Marlon Brando and like Richard Pryor were like in a relationship or something. Uh, but he but he started talking. He started talking about he's like jazz is is the the peak of music and what Miles was doing was just like the best that we've gotten so far and i was like that's so interesting i want like i want to know specifically why he was thinking that and i feel like your video explains that i feel like if there's an argument for what the best what the just like just almost scientifically or mathematically the best form of music creation there is i feel like that is has a very strong argument for it let's please not get into the conversation yeah. about what yeah is you're the gonna need to cut me off because this is gonna yeah. be yeah <laughs> but but yeah it is it is it please uh, if you want to go learn something go watch that video it is so good um and uh oh and actually you know what? i was gonna ask you uh let's talk about your learning how to do the uh the kinetic typography like was that was that just you you found like a tutorial on youtube and you were following that or did you put any of your own touch into that and how how sort of instinctive was it and how tutorialized was it so i hate watching tutorials um Mm -hmm. i have no patience for them yeah I i kind of click through them and i think if you like watching tutorials there's there's a ton a ton of great resources on youtube on oh, yeah. Skillshare. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, they're what, not. A, they're not a. They're not. They're not a sponsor yet. Cool it. They're, they're a sponsor <laughs> of like all of my videos though, so I gotta shout them out. <laughs> Go to skillshare.com slash polyphonic twelve. Damn and... it! <laughs> ah, I can't edit it out now. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Um. But but yeah, I think that a lot of these um, there's a lot of these videos that are really really helpful. But what I my personal process, I tend to watch a bit of these videos and kind of click through and scan through them, scan through them to get like, uh, basic concepts that I need. Mm -hmm. The biggest concept that I needed for this was null objects. Yeah. And once I figured out what null objects were and how they worked, Mm -hmm. everything else I kind of just felt out as I went, uh, There, there's a couple things like turning on the motion blur, things like that. A couple things that I, uh, that I picked up, but from there, it's just kind of a whole lot of playing around. And you can, in a lot of my videos, you can almost kind of like, I, I, so I edit my videos in a very linear way. Um, and you can kind of see me playing around and becoming mm-hmm. more comfortable with these things throughout the video. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so that's kind of generally I I'm I'm a very hands-on person like when I learn something when I've been learning something especially in editing I'm just like okay how's this done I'll look up a quick tutorial listen to half of it be like okay I know enough and then spend way too many hours just (laughs) playing around with stuff and figuring stuff out I I'm I I prefer tangible things like that than I'd, I'd rather just hands-on go in and do something than read about how to do something 
Yeah, and my my process is identical. Like I will I will tutorials for me are to give me a hint when I'm stuck and I will watch as far as the next piece I needed to be like, "Oh yeah, this 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 one effect. Okay, that's I'll turn yeah. it off and I'll I'll go back into it and start playing around with this new element that the tutorial introduced to me." But again, if you just want to do pure tutorials, then go for it. I would recommend experimenting a lot though. And uh, there's definitely things that I could have benefited from, from actually watching tutorials. Like, like, like what you mentioned with the motion blur, you'll notice in my fourth video in the Spielberg video, I turned on motion blur and it was just a button I could have clicked. And I was just like, this makes everything look twice as good. And that is the one thing that if I, if I ever went back and re-edited things, it would be motion blur for sure. Another thing I really like doing, especially Mm -hmm. so in, in talking about video editing and you can do this in other things too, is I just love grabbing effects from the effects panel. Yes. Estimating what they might do, dragging them on (laughs) and being like, Oh, I was very wrong. I have no idea what this does. Uh, Oh, or, 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 or or sometimes it's like, Oh yeah, no, that's exactly what I was expecting. And I like, I like playing around with that, dragging things on, seeing if they work. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. A lot of effects I know what they do. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how they work. Like, Mm -hmm. like, I don't know the systems behind how matting works. I know how to like, like Mm -hmm. track mat key something. um, But I have no idea what it's doing mathematically. And sometimes it gets all screwy and I'm just figuring it out and playing Mm -hmm. around. But, but that's some, that's another one. Like track mats are something that I've been using more and more. That's another Mm -hmm. one where I like, kind of looked up how would you do this thing and they were like oh use a track mat and i'm like okay mm-hmm. i'll figure it out from there yeah yeah and that this is actually lead into uh one of the last ones i have but it, it really is just uh none of this would is like possible without just just diving into it and actually my my recommendation is go check out the it was part three of my uh jackie orm's uh, stream also on the Patreon, uh, where I was just, I, I had this shot that I'm doing for this new video that I was like, okay, I know exactly what it looks like in my head. Uh, and the, the premise was just, I'm going to zoom in on the cover of the first Superman issue and it's going to be the printing dots of his skin tone. And then I'm, and then there's like the rest of it I know how to do, but that specific thing is going to be like, because I have to fake it because there's no, there's no, uh, version of that cover that's high enough resolution. And also if you notice on that cover, there's not even printing dots. I had to fake that. So, uh, so I, I was like, you know what, I'm going to stream this and we're going to figure it out together. And so for like a 15 second, uh, footage, uh, piece of footage, I, we spent an hour and 45 minutes just trying things. And there was that point where I was like, okay, uh, I'm just going to hop into the effects bar here and just start clicking under stylize or generate or whatever different yeah. things that might give me a cool effect and different blurs and stuff like that. And just so, yeah, that's that is one challenge I will give to people out there. Uh, especially if you're an editor or a writer or whatever, come up with something that you have no idea how to do it. Don't look at anything. Just dive into it, brute force it, figure it out because it might not be the best version of that thing, but it will, you will learn so many cool things like just through that process and also things that you would have never figured out. Like there was, I was going through transitions and literally the first shot of my first video, uh, I was just, I was just playing around in after effects and I was like, I was, I, I assumed that there would be like, Oh, I want to make it a VHS, uh, quality to this, this footage I have. Um, so I just assumed that there would be like, oh, there's a VHS setting. And no, of course not. That would be way too easy. Um, so what I ended up doing was playing around with every transition and effect and just learning yeah. it. And eventually I fell upon uh, the Venetian blind transition where it will like literally where it will make these. It, the transition is just a series. You control how thick the lines are, but it's a series yeah. of bars that go across uh, the image in whatever angle you want them to it like it starts out just pointing straight up like top to bottom these 
thick bars that uh, that you know it'll just kind of wipe the the image in in these bars and these bars animate as if it's venetian blinds Mm -hmm. what i did was i took it and like turned it 90 degrees so it was vertical made the bars very very slim and then uh and then increased like the feathering on them so they're a bit blurrier and then uh decreased i think maybe the opacity or something but uh but it resulted in that old uh old television effect of the scan lines across the tv and that's that's how i got that first shot was just screwing around with everything and just being like oh this works and yeah it it is it is such it's just a fun process that's that's the that's honestly the big thing with learning stuff do fun stuff that's fun to learn i i did i have a similar story as your uh Mm -hmm. superman dots with if you watch my jack white video Mm -hmm. About a minute and 25 seconds in, there's a point where three bars come up. They become the three legs of a table. The table flips. It becomes the three primary colors, transform Uh into clocks, zoom in on the clock, one of the clocks, and it becomes a crucifix. Uh That's, That's a thing where I very much had this image in my mind. And I was like, okay, how do I do this? And I knew I couldn't do it in Premiere. Um, So I started messing around in After Effects and and made it and i'm pretty happy with the result it looks um really cool thank you thank you but again that's a very similar thing where that was just like like in my mind it was so clear what i wanted mm-hmm. and then I, I i went and just figured out from scratch how to make it work yeah another one another interesting thing that i've done is so i was working on a video um i think it was actually my 21 pilots video and I had a thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to do some stuff with rotoscoping. Mm-hmm. And I tried to do it and I couldn't get it to work because the the people were just too blended into the background of the video. And I was like, hmm, how can I do... Like, I really like the idea of rotoscoping and popping stuff out. I think it always looks so good. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, oh, hey, you want to know what music video would be super easy to rotoscope? <laughs> I get the feeling it was it the Talking Heads one. It was the Talking Heads <laughs> one. Yeah. And so, so I I tried something with one thing, it didn't work. But then I thought, how can I apply this technique to something else? What's something that's an mm-hmm. easier version of this that I could do? And then I basically from from the idea of oh, I could do cool visuals with this video. That was the impetus for doing a script on Once in a Lifetime. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that's one where I was built, like I started with a visual concept and was like, okay, can I build a script back from that? Which was a really different kind of process for me. Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. Uh, that's, you know, and there's a good cautionary tale there too, because your reaction to, oh, this is really hard to rotoscope was I'm going to come up, what's something that's easy to rotoscope. And then you do that. My reaction is, well, I guess I'll mask everything out by hand instead and spend 10 <laughs> hours on it. So shout out to that uh, that title card from towards the beginning of the Star Wars video where it's uh, Kylo and Luke cut out because the rotoscoping didn't work. And that is all hand hand animated masks. But that's also that's a good learning thing where you just learn you don't want to do it anymore, which is also extremely valuable knowledge. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, this was dumb and I need to avoid this now. Also, one of the greatest pieces of advice on that uh I got it from I got it via someone else from Matthew Dyson, also known as Gamescore fanat, uh, Gamescore fanfare. I always call him Gamescore fanatic. I remembered it once as that, and I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Matthew, um, from Gamescore fanfare. Uh, and basically, apparently, the, the advice goes: um, perfect is good, done is better. So yeah. perfection is good it's good to strive for this but at the end of the day at some point you're gonna need to surrender because if you just go for perfection for perfection the entire time it's an impossible goal because as you're working towards that you'll be getting better so your vision Mm -hmm. of what what's perfect will be changing like Mm -hmm. my idea of a perfect polyphonic video now is so different than what my idea would have been a year ago right 
So right. I, I, if you're constantly striving and like going back and redoing stuff and th there's, there's definitely a virtue to that, but there's also a virtue of being, this isn't perfect, but most of the things that I don't like about this are either personal things that I don't like or things that are too small for people to notice. So just put it out there, put your work into the ether. Yes. Yes. Uh, so here, let's 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 summarize what we got so far, real quick. Ones: talk to people, ask questions. That's always good. Uh, just watch and consume a lot of media, not necessarily even relevant to what you're doing, but just like all over the place. Learn learn from everywhere. Uh, reverse engineering, super good. Try that out. Uh, check out your older stuff. I know it's painful. You can get through it. Just be proud of what you've done. You've and also be proud of how far you've come because that's dope too. Uh, and in the immortal words of uh, of William Nike, uh, just do it. Uh, and 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 I would also say one more is just mm -hmm. don't don't be comfortable with being comfortable. Yeah. I'll always yes. push yourself in the immortal words of Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. There's there's an amazing break in Kendrick Lamar's Wesley's theory where Dre says, yes. remember the first time you came out to the house? Am I allowed to swear? Uh, yes. OK, says, remember the first time you came out to the house? You said you wanted a spot like mine. But remember, anybody can get it. The hard part is keeping it, mother. <laughs> and I, I, I always I always live by that with with YouTube success and especially in creative endeavors, but really in anything, anyone can get lucky once, have mm -hmm. something hit, especially in YouTube. Anyone can have one vi one video go viral. The hard part is continuing to make content that people keep wanting to watch yes. things that keep people coming back. And that's why you always need to be pushing yourself. And that's why you always need to be learning new things is people if you do the same thing over and over people are going to get bored yeah that's or sometimes they won't end your acdc but usually <laughs> usually people will get bored so you got to keep pushing yourself and you got to take risks and you've got to try new things yes yeah that's you know honestly that's one of the things that i, I feel like that just summarizes why this whole thing is so important to just keep learning and because i'm starting to notice with my videos now that the things that i made up from scratch that were so revolutionary to me uh have become just stale like some of these crazy transitions that i made up uh you know in my second or third video are just like ugh, i'm just doing that same transition again i'm just doing the same stuff and I'm, and the audience is going to notice that too. And just also just to just to keep yourself sane and to keep things fresh. And so you and just that that momentum is so important to any career. Uh, so yeah, just just keep learning. Uh, and and let's you know what I this is what I'm this is what I'm dying to get to. Uh, you the posters. The posters. You put out these posters. What late last year? Oh. Uh, yeah, last summer or fall. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more coming eventually. Please. So, uh, you were kind enough to send me some. I've I've done. Here's a here's a pro tip for these really quick because you can get each one for they're like twelve bucks each. They're super cheap, but you can get all three of them for for uh, what thirty? Uh, it, this I'm talking yep. USD here. Yeah. And uh, so the the pro thing I've been doing because. Uh, the apartment I'm in now is super small. So I've just, I, I have the one frame on the wall and I will just switch out the posters like every once in a while. And now I have like ah. this revolving, this revolving uh, frame of just dope information. It's learning for your wall. Uh, how about, here, uh, explain what these posters are. Other than the great tagline, it's learning for your wall, which is uh, everyone just the, clicked on the link. Other the than the very passable tagline. Um, <laughs> so basically what I the way I describe them at is uh, a polyphonic video adapted into a poster. The same way you yep. might adapt a book into a movie. It's a polyphonic mm -hmm. video adapted into a poster. So I take the aesthetic of the video and I take uh, kind of the narration of the video, but it's not the script exactly. Um, it's kind of rewritten 
for this form. Sometimes the posters have uh, have little tidbits that are a bit um, juicier or things that I wanted to talk about but couldn't fit in the video mm -hmm. um, or things like that. And then I take the aesthetics, which I'm I always feel like is one of the selling points of Polyphonic is every every time you open a video, it's going to be a different aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I put them into into poster form. Uh, so, for example, one that that has some stuff that I wanted to get into more but didn't in the video, one of the posters is How Jack White Uses Color, which was my third video ever, maybe. And in that, I talk about his solo co career and the White Stripes. Um, but in the poster, I also have sections on the dead weather and the raconteurs uh, and kind mm -hmm. of how color affects that. And yeah... I just some of my favorite videos aesthetically and there's some that I tried to adapt but just couldn't figure out so these were also three that I figured were very adaptable I, I put them into big old poster forms and if you're looking for them you can go to store.dftba.com slash collections slash polyphonic they might be moving somewhere else soon but for the time being that's where they are Yes, um, uh, and I will. And if they do move, I will update the link in the description. So just click on the link in the description, and perfect. Regardless, it'll take you there. Uh, so, so where did you where did you like start with this process? What was like what, what was step one of doing this? Because this seems like a crazy process. I wouldn't even know how to approach. So step one is basically uh, I was told posters were a good idea and would be a good fit for my channel. Because mm -hmm. apparently t-shirts don't actually sell that well. Um, but they're cool. And uh, and a lot of people I've been asking for merch. Mm -hmm. And so the people I'm working with, the great people at DFTBA, they kind of recommended, I think posters would be a good fit. So what I did was I went, they gave me some examples too of uh, some other posters. Like Crash Course uh, do phenomenal kind of infographic posters. And this was one of my first things is I was like, I want my posters to be infographics. I don't want them just mm -hmm. to be like, like it feels a little weird for me to just like make a David Bowie poster and sell yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Cause it's like, okay, that's like someone, if someone wants a David Bowie poster, they'll get a David Bowie poster. Yeah. I wanted these to be polyphonic posters. So they needed to have the information. So then it was a lot of just, I'm so I love Photoshop and I love InDesign. I love layout stuff. I've done stuff with magazines uh, and stuff like that before. So I, I just kind of applied a lot of that. And so I'd look at, I'd look at something and I was like, okay, I'll pull up my script how can I break up this script? Mm -hmm. And so, for example, the the good vibrations is, and it's my best selling one. It was super easy to adapt to a poster because mm -hmm. in good vibrations, I just broke the song up section by section. So I'm like, okay, I can just vertically have these sections going down, and that's easy. And then I threw in some other little bits that I said about the recording sessions or the wall of sound or things like that. And then I grabbed my color scheme from that video, went in, grabbed the hex codes, grabbed mm -hmm. a bunch of my visuals and just plugged them in and started kind of, I don't know, playing around. Um, I just, I have a good, not to brag, I like to think I have a good eye for design. Right. And so it's a lot of just fiddling around with this stuff. Which, yeah, you said your a lot of your background, like your expertise comes from uh, Photoshop, right? Like yes. even with your videos. Yeah, I've been Photoshopping since... I think I first started on CS3 um, back in like 2008. Um, originally making sit forum signatures. For those of you that remember what forum signatures were, that'll <laughs> date me a little and bit. This, this was actually back in a time where it was a physical shop that you could go to, right? <laughs> yeah, the, the Photoshop, <laughs> yes. The local Photoshop is PPE at the end is, yeah. But, but yeah, so Photoshop and I've done stuff in... Uh, in design too. I did these guys in Photoshop. I'm, yeah, I did them in Photoshop. I considered doing them in InDesign, but then didn't quite have, um, it didn't quite have some of the things that I wanted to do and I was comfortable with. But yeah, so that that's kind of just how I put them together based on designs, uh, 
Yeah, I don't. I, I'm. I'm not good. This is. This is. I'm. I'm real. <laughs> really swinging and missing here. I don't really know how to describe. I just kind of made them. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's 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 also very good advice. Is just like. I feel like so much of especially creative stuff is you're not going to get the you can follow a tutorial to a T and it can still be, you know, a bad video or a bad poster or bad whatever, because there needs to be that sort of aesthetic and emotion behind it and that vision. I'd also say my big thing with the posters and also with my thumbnails, I'm always super Mm -hmm. proud of my thumbnails. I don't know if they get clicks but I like to think there's some of the more beautiful ones on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's very much the angle I take. <laughs> the I, I, I always say kind of when you think you're done, you're just getting started. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's the same with the posters. I kind of lay them all out and I've got almost like a framework. I'm like, okay, this looks good. And then w- you go into really uh, like the nitty gritty stuff. You go into adding different lighting layers, adding different Mm -hmm. textures, playing around, moving stuff a little bit. Does like in the good vibrations one, does the wall of sound box work better up here or better down there? Uh, What color should this background be? Uh, Mm -hmm. Oh, it turns out my episodic digressions would work if I kind of pulled this out a little. I'm looking at these. I'm not pulling these off of memory. (laughs) Um, But, but once, once you think you're done, you can that's when that's when the creativity really starts and the experimentation mm-hmm. really starts and and what makes things pop is that extra mile the invisible stuff the stuff that people can't really tell you did that's mm-hmm. that's the real money maker yes that's that's something that again this is why it's been honestly it's been more enlightening for me than anyone else probably these editing streams that i've been doing just because i'm kind of narrating what i'm doing and i'm just like oh yeah that's that's actually what i'm doing here because it's so so unconscious for me at this point and that's that's something that like how how bad my videos look until the last five percent of the video or of like each process where it's just like okay this i man this this just looks off oh i clicked on the motion blur now it looks great or like i i changed the uh the keyframe velocity that's always a big thing for me that i will play with to death uh if anyone wants to know how I get the certain movement and stuff like that. I'm, I'm constantly playing with the length and the keyframe velocity of the animations. And just that it's one of those things where it's just like you go a, a level deeper and all of these options open up. And that's where I feel like a lot of the expression comes from. And a lot of the personal choices come into play. It's not just those big, those big decisions, but just these tiny little details that you're constantly throwing in that really flesh things out. So yeah, that's, that's super interesting to see that, take form in like the the poster form which is super fascinating to me oh and and also is is there anything from this this poster making uh, process that would be just good that you learned that would be like good information for maybe someone else that wanted to take on something like this poster files are really big and slow your computer down (laughs) a lot (laughs) Um, what was do you know do you know offhand what the what the like resolution was on it or the uh give me a minute and i can pull it up. i can pull up resolution and file size i have them okay. all in a handy dandy folder here this is this and, is the nerdiest information for me to yeah yeah we can cut some of this searching and post all right one sec see my computer's freezing even opening the posters folder that's how unhappy it is with me <laughs> so the Good vibrations PSD. Mm -hmm. So dimensions wise, they are fifty four seventy five by seventy two seventy five. Jesus. And so that that's another thing that uh, another constraint that I had in the posters. First of all, Mm -hmm. if I was going to use images, they needed to be Creative Commons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they yeah. also needed to be massive, so I didn't yeah. end up using images. In my Bowie one, I used a couple smaller images for smaller parts, and I commissioned an artwork from my talented friend, Kim Carr, um, of the Bowie behind. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. And and, and also for the uh, Jack White poster, mm-hmm. I, I I created the, used the Jack White stick figures, but then I commissioned the guitars from my talented fiance, because I'm at vector art, fun fact. <laughs> 
I can't do Illustrator, but but yeah. So basically, fifty five by seventy three hundred. The uh, PSD file size of my Good Vibrations is one hundred sixty three megabytes. Oh my god. Um, I bet you. Oh yeah, yeah. No, you want to hear big? The PSD yeah. file size of my Thin White Duke, mm-hmm. uh, because it has that big that big artwork and a, mm-hmm. a, a lot more going on in it. You want let's prices right this. How big do you oh, think it boy. is? Oh boy. Oh boy. Are we just going file size on this one? Yeah, file uh, size. I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'll go a conservative two hundred megabytes. Seven hundred eighty two megabytes. For an on image. <laughs> for that's, yeah. that's yeah. Dude, I I just exported the first half of my video and it wasn't that big. Yeah. So so that's one lesson. These things are big, um, and 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 I think part of the reason the videos looked so good is the it's the Orson Welles thing. It's because of the scale I was working with. I really was limited in some of the things that I could do, and because of that, I had to rely mm-hmm. more on really stellar composition to keep it dy- dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, and really good use of te- use of text to keep it dynamic. Right. And I think that that's a big thing that helped um, helped make the video so good is or make the poster so good rather mm-hmm. is I was working in a new medium, and this medium had new uh, confines that I needed to work within. So I think another a big lesson would be don't be afraid to work in a new medium. Uh, try yeah. try something you haven't done and. And you'll learn new things from it. And you'll, at, at the very least, you'll have done something different and weird. Yes, that is, that is, uh, that is something that I've been hyper aware of with like, even I, that's why I've loved the term stuff maker is because I feel like it is so easy to do so many mediums now and just, just literally do whatever the, the channel started out where I was like, oh, this, this blog post I'm writing would be better as a video. So I just made a video. I learned how to make videos for it. And it is, it's crazy how much it could even like change your life. Just try new things, try new mediums, try new stuff all the time. New food, new movies, TV shows. I don't know. Uh, what do, what, I don't, what, what do people try? Languages. Cars. Languages. That's slightly better than cars. <laughs> but you know what? Try new cars. That's Games. that's if, if there's oh there we go. Go play Magic the Gathering. Legitimately, but no, don't. Yeah, yes. That's I just told all of your <laughs> listeners to start a dangerous addictive habit that will bankrupt hey. them. Hey, hey, we're Yu-Gi-Oh people on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh gross. So <laughs> go new go try new stuff. Uh and 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 you know what? If only there is some kind of closing phrase i've I've said before it's on the tip of my tongue i I think i should just throw in our our closing phrase from our other (laughs) podcast now (laughs) oh Oh, i feel like i feel like uh i'm not not gonna spoil it (laughs) yeah that would be you know for the people it doesn't spoil would be a fascinating reaction to it i i Um, I could say it if you want me to say it if we want to say it at the same time you know yep of course as always, am I shitting? Am I shitting? You left me hanging there. <laughs> I was I was uh, kind of expecting a count in or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we just gotta feel it, man. Uh, and also go make stuff. Thanks, thanks, Noah. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me on. Go check out those posters. Bye. All right, we did it. You have learned how to learn. Uh, I hope you're feeling a bit more inspired. Did you not just go out, go out, do something new, learn something? It's fun. I love it. So, a uh, big old shout out, of course, to Sandy Swagger. Classic, classic Sandy Swagger. Been been a patron for over a year. Same with uh, uh, T.C. Arkenberg. Been a patron for forever. Julie Rimley, also there just since the beginning, ground floor. You you guys are killing it. I love you. Uh, Tyler Anderson, you are the best. Kathy Murphy, also the best. And Kira Greenfield, keep killing it. You're you're awesome. You're you're amazing. And quick quick shout out to Ryan Peliquin, Andrew Seibert, Verlin Coker, Sarah Kennedy, Tim Mack, Joel Barber, Al Perth, and you know Rosie Fernando. Got to got to shout out Rosie. So also oh of course 
big shout out to Noah of Polyphonic for coming and hanging out. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna check Noah's stuff out, down in the description we got the link to his YouTube channel, got the link to his Twitter, got to, we got the link to that merch store, which has so many cool things. It's not just posters; it's got stickers. It's got it's 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 the best. Go check it out. Go check all of it out. And uh, stay tuned for next week. I think we're gonna be talking Game of Thrones probably uh, because I just marathoned like 40 something episodes in a matter of like six days so let's talk about that next week it should be fun and as always go make stuff (laughs) 